king. Yeah. Hey guys, this tutorial is dedicated to Callum, and I'm going to be showing you how to recover files from a Mac that is no longer bootable. Let's say OS X went corrupt for some reason, and you get the little folder with the question mark icon and trying to boot your operating system, and you can't access any of your important files. And let's also say you never backed any of those up onto an external hard drive using Time Machine or anything of that sort. Let's get started right away. Go ahead on any computer, doesn't matter what, as long as it has a burnable CD drive, and open up the internet and go to Google and type Linux Linux Mint. Linux Mint. This is my favorite distribution of Linux. Go ahead and click the first one. It's going to bring you to this page here, the home of Linux Mint. Go ahead and click download in the top. We are going to burn to a CD, not a DVD. You don't need the full thing. Live CD, 32 bit if you're on a 32 bit computer, which most all of you are. So click 32 bit. And uh, it pretty much just tells you about it. Click where you're from. Let's see if we can find Canada in here. Click that, and it starts the download of Linux Mint. So it's going to take a bit of time to download, and I'm going to come back after that without skipping a bit. Okay, so after Lin Linux Mint finishes downloading, which it has, go ahead and pop in a blank CD-R. Finder will pop up asking you what you want to do with it. Just hit ignore. Now go up to your spotlight search and type disk utility. Disk, ut disk utility, right there. And if uh, you couldn't find it through Spotlight, go to Applications, Utilities, ooh, Utilities, and find Disk Utility right here. Disk Utility. Good, it'll open up here. And what you're going to do is you're going to go up to the top bar, hit Images, and go Burn. Select the image to burn, so go to your downloads, most likely. Downloads. Find it in here. Linux Mint, right there. That's the one we just downloaded. Uh, yep. Burn. We're burning. After it's done, hit eject disk. Yep. And burn. So now what it's going to do is burn the Linux Mint distribution to the disk so it becomes bootable when we put it in another computer, or this computer for instance. Um, if you're on Windows, go ahead and download free ISO burner, probably. This looks like it's going to work well. Um, really any ISO burning software. Alright, so wait for it to burn and once it's done burning I will come back. All right, while well, you're, well, you're waiting for the disk to finish burning, go ahead and queue up the Mac in question. Obviously, you won't be able to boot OS X, so I'm just going to familiarize you with a couple um, boot commands. Um, all right, my disk just finished burning, so go ahead and uh, your Mac's going to be shut off in the first place. So I'm just going to shut down. Alright, my other Mac just told me that my disk was burned successfully. Go ahead and turn on your Mac. You're going to get the Apple bong noise and then the qu weird question mark, probably. Any point during this, put in your disk, and then shut back down by holding down the power button. Good, now it's off. Take your finger, hold down the Option key, or the Alt key, and push power. Do not let go of the Option slash Alt key. This is going to boot with a GUI asking what you want to boot from. Currently it only shows my Macintosh hard drive because it's detecting the disk. There we go. CD pops up. Lol, it says Windows. It doesn't know it's Linux. Or hit enter. Sorry. Yeah, there we go. Good. Now it's going to load from the CD, most likely. Yep. Now look what you're seeing here. Automatically booting in so and so many seconds. So I'm going to I'm going to just push the down arrow, which will get it to stop from doing that. Okay, so we're going to tell it to start Linux Mint. 
Um, yeah, start Linux Mint. Hit the Enter key. I'm going to run a couple of weird codes. I want control here. That says Linux Mint, by the way. And during this time, you might as well go and grab your external hard drive, which you're going to be copying files to. So I'm going to go do that. Okay, so I've got my external hard drive here. It's just a pocketbook. Still booting Linux. It's probably going to take a while. It's because it's from a CD. CDs have slow speeds. Oh. Wait for it. I'll come back once it takes us to the main desktop. Alright, and we're back. Now, what I neglected to see was we were actually back before, but the brightness is so far down. I, I do try to turn it up, but it won't go up any further. Move. I'm gonna manual this now. Okay, we're off the tripod. Okay, so we see the main Linux symbol here. Manual focus this. Linux symbol right there. That looks, that looks nice. Alright, and we got the main desktop icons as you can see there. Um, plug in your external hard drive. Manual focus is hard. Plug in your external hard drive, of course. It's on the other side. Good, and it's actually going to pop up right underneath that disk icon. My mom's making cookies. There it is, pocket drive. And it's gonna pop up there as you see. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to your main hard drive. So go to computer. I'm so sorry, this is out of focus. And we're going to go to my 320 gig hard drive because that is my main Macintosh hard drive. I'm gonna open it up. <coughs> we're gonna navigate over to the, um, users. Double click that. I'm gonna go to my user. And you'll see those you'll see all your desktop documents, downloads, etc. Now you notice those little X's. That is uh, because I'm a password protected user on OS X, I can't access. If I try, it'll say this folder contains stuff that can't be displayed because you're not the admin. Right? So just go back and right click, two finger tap, and say open as ad as administrator. Linux is really smart like this. Um, we're going to do this to my, I don't really have anything in my computer, but we'll go to my music. Open as administrator. I can now click iTunes, right click it, say copy. And then I can go to my pocket drive hard drive, which is right here, right click and say paste. And that's going to copy after doing this multiple times, I can copy the entire contents of my Macintosh hard drive, all my files and everything like that, onto an external device. After you're done that, and you have all your files safe and sound, might as well reboot Linux. So to do that, or reboot your computer and get out of Linux, so go to Menu, say Quit. You're going to say shut down. Shut down. And it's going to proceed to shut down Linux. It's me. And it automatically ejected the disk just now for me. Linux is still running, as you can see. Alright, Linux is now shut off, so what I'm going to do is just turn my MacBook back on. And this is just proving the point that it's going to boot right back to OS X. The normal Mac. There you go. There's the Apple logo. Showing that indeed, yes, you're booting back to your normal operating system. So now what you would do that you have all your files over on your external hard drive is you'd reinstall OS X and uh, just migrate back, copy them slowly all back. Thanks for watching this advanced tutorial on how to do data recovery if your MacBook does not have a FireWire port. If it has FireWire port, you'd be using something called Target Disk Mode, which I can do another tutorial on at a later date and time. Thanks for, thanks for watching, we'll see you all later.